Hello, and welcome back to Cinema 130. This is our uh, final um, unit. We have been covering editing and sound. Now we're going to wrap up with producing. So week 14, producing. I bet this is the topic that uh, students know the least about. And in some ways, it's the most interesting lecture because there's a lot of interesting little details to filmmaking that I'm going to get into. So let's get to it. Okay. Oh. All right. So producing, that's this week's uh, lecture. It's week 14, pages 51 to 54. Uh, no homework this week. Well, watch the lecture to prepare, uh, prepare for quiz uh, four. So some of the terms discussed uh, today will show up on your quiz. And your final case study is you have a choice from two films. You have E2 Mama Tambien, which is a wonderful Spanish language film set in Mexico on a road trip by Alfonso, Alfonso Cuaron, who also directed Roma and Gravity and other great films. You also have Everything Everywhere All at Once, which is a film that was released in 2022 uh, in the uh, spring. Uh, highly, highly acclaimed film, which I expect to be nominated for Best Picture and possibly Best Actress. So two great films. Read about those in the uh, module and decide which one you want to watch, okay? All right, producer. What does a producer do? A movie producer is the person responsible for finding and launching a project, arranging the film's financing, hiring screenwriters, a director, and key members of the creative team. And essentially overseeing all elements of pre-production, production, and post-production right up to the film's release. So it's really the producer that takes the film from concept all the way up to release and so forth and so on. So no film ever gets made without a producer. They're not the director. They hire the director to make the film. Now, sometimes there are director producers. We'll get into that. The producer is a dreamer, a visionary, a businessman who wakes up one day and says, I have an, I, uh, an idea. And he's going to take that idea, get a treatment, get a script, and so on and so forth. Now, most films have multiple producers, okay, because there's so much work that it really makes much more sense to have more producers, okay. Produced by is the key title to determine who did the bulk of the work to get a movie made, okay. When you see that title in the credits, produced by, you know who's the producer. So this is what it looks like produced by. So the average number of producers for films have been going up, as we can see here. Um, as projects be more, become more complex, you're adding in CGI and other elements, more producers are needed because they're sharing uh, the duties. Now, sometimes there's a hierarchy within producers, and sometimes they're all equals, two or three equals, who are all combining their talents to make the film. Here's what this entails, conceiving the movie's premise or securing the rights to a movie source material, uh, getting financing, okay? No money, no film. So in addition to being creative and inspirational, producer's number one talent is getting money or convincing other people to give them money, all right? So they find or create a script, hire a screenwriter and develop the story. Once the script is complete, they hire the creative team. So we're talking to the director, maybe uh, the department heads. Uh, eventually, you move on to casting with your director and department heads. Then, of course, you have to actually make the film. Okay, so this is all the preliminary steps. Personality. Uh, usually, there's someone who's outgoing, a natural leader, fearless, and inspirational. The most important skill for being a producer are interpersonal skills, a love for filmmaking and fundraising. While a, produ a producer is an artistic person and should have a passion for the art form, they must have a strong sense for business, okay, and commercial success. Lifestyle. The work and life balance for film producers is incredibly complex. The job is often 24-7. Hours are erratic. So your relationships will be affected, and stress management is key. Now, director producers uh, are essentially people who do both jobs. There's someone who is, has the concept and wants to take it from the beginning, then they also want to step in and direct the film, okay? So they want to be involved in all the business and, cre and creative decisions as well as direct the film. So it's a big job. And Tarantino, Christopher Nolan, Spike Lee, Wes Anderson, a lot of the biggest auteur directors are also producer-director. Now, that doesn't mean they'll be doing all the 
the nitty gritty work that a producer will do. They'll have, they'll hire people to do that, but they're essentially, they're involved in all of the creative decisions and have uh, creative control. Okay. So types of producers. So we have producers, usually there's more than one manages the entire production, the budget, the creatives, et cetera. Now executive producers usually are money in contracts. They're entertainment lawyers. They have connections. Very often they're there to secure larger financing and to give investors some security because this big wig is sort of giving this film the thumbs up. Sometimes they're more in charge, sometimes they're less in charge, really depending on the production. Co-producers contribute financing or maybe they're distributors or entertainment lawyers that are doing certain work for the film. There's lots of legal proceedings in the production of a film. Uh, so much so that I'm not gonna get into that because it's not the most interesting. Then we have associate producers who are, this is mainly an honorary title, okay? So they're there because of connections, favors, or maybe <clears throat> just someone to sort of give a nod to. They're allowing you to use their location. Um, those are the two main things. Now, real quickly, a word about line producers. Now, they're the heart of any production. They actually are the hands-on foreman who oversee the production part. Remember, the producer is there from the beginning, from development, pre-production, production, post-production. The line producer is the guy in the tr trenches making the film. So this is a guy who's a filmmaker, a real filmmaker, understands that craft. He's going to be in, on the set executing the will of the larger producers. Okay, so here's the production schedule. We're in de development from one to two years. That's the largest phase. You know, this can take a long time just to get something, just to get the money and get it off the ground. Pre-production, three to six months. Uh, production is actually the shortest, two to four months. And then post-production is nine to 12 months. It takes quite a bit of time to finish a film. So from conception to release, for most films is going to be two to three years. You can, you'll see films come under, uh, in the, uh, under that very rarely, unless it's a very small, low budget film. So it's two to three years, bigger films, maybe even longer because of all of the elaborate shots, CGI, and so forth. So how long does it take to make a film? A comedies, romance, horror, simpler, cheaper genres, genres take less time. Uh, Sci-fi, action, adventure, higher budget, more complicated, more action shots, they take longer. As you can see here, this is days listed. Average chrono chronology of key milestones in a Hollywood studio movie. So um, first announcement to when you go into pre-production, that's uh, again, the, the more complex adventure, action, sci-fi, fantasy, they take longer and their whole runtime is longer and the whole production time is longer. Okay, you kind of see the, the, the shoot is actually maybe the smallest amount of time, really, most of the time, once in a while, it's longer than production, but it costs the most money. So development, this is when the producer develops the project from an idea. It's a lot of research and conversation, okay? Seeing who is interested in developing the story. First, you get the rights to a story or you buy a completed script. Second, you get financing, okay? No money, no film. Must find a studio or independent investors who believe in the project to get it started. So essentially, you're dialing for dollars. You can also develop a script on your own. Eventually, you find a director and a star. This will attract more financing and more talent. Now, sometimes you get that director and, and that star first, and then the money shows up. So screenplays, you either write it yourself and you copyright. Many producers aren't writers, but they will collaborate with writers and directors on a story. They'll contribute major story points, maybe make suggestions about logistics or set pieces. Now, you can hire a screenwriter. You got an idea, but you're not a writer, hire one, okay? Get creative. Um, and there's many, many writers all throughout Los Angeles, all throughout the country that are willing to work relatively cheap to write a script. They might take an existing script they have and modify it. There's all kinds of different ways this works, but you can get a script written for you. Now, it's not immediate. This is going to take months, maybe longer, but uh, it can get done. And then lastly, and the most common is you pay for the rights to a story or a script. You just, you find a script you like, or you, you see a story in the news that you like, and you go to that person and say, hey, I'm going to option I'm going to option your story to make a movie and you pay them a certain amount of money, even without a script being written to have the rights to their story. This is called optioning and it's how a lot of movies get made, but many, many, many more stories and scripts get optioned that never get made. Okay. 
So the pitch, a pitch is a brief explanation of a film concept typically made by a screenwriter or director to a producer, an exec executive or a financial sponsor. Now it could be the producer could be making the pitch to uh, a potential financier. When you compile a movie pitch, you want to include the most essential elements of your story or production in a clear and compelling way. So here is a, a real simple pitch. I'll let you read this on your own from Jaws, uh, talking about, um, and this is how someone would pitch Jaws to sort of sell someone. You remember, you're just using words to describe a film without images. And so the pitch is very important. You've got to be enthusiastic and then often maybe compare it to another film so that the the person who's giving the money has an idea that this is going to work. Okay, financing. It's the most crucial aspect of the film project because the production needs money to even begin the process, even to begin pre-production. Most films are financed through a combination of investors, tax credits, grants, and other sources. This funding must be secured at the beginning of a motion picture's development in order to pay for all costs that accrue during the making of the film. So financing, it's often either through a studio, the studio handles most of the financing when a feature film uh, is being made under their umbrella, okay, this is sometimes called a Hollywood film, so Universal or Paramount's going to make this film. Independently, a film project is made without the help of a studio, it's called an independent film, okay, so that's that distinction, it's independent of the major studios. And they're going out and getting independent fundings. It could come from Saudi Arabia. It could come from other wealthy people. Uh, lots of different ways it can happen. Okay, green lighting. So this is a happy day in the life of a filmmaker when your film gets green light. Okay, then that's when you go from development to pre-production. Because now, okay, we have a film because we already have the script or maybe you just have most of the script. The key thing is we have money. We can finish the script. We can find the locations. We can do all that, but we have the money. We have someone who's interested. And very often included in this is a distribution deal. They already know at the end of the film that they have a way to make money, that there are people who are interested in exhibiting this film. So at the five major studios, green lighting is usually held by high level executives. However, the chairman or chief executive usually has the final call. And this is important because millions of dollars are ultimately on the line of what films you choose to make versus ones you don't. And if you have a flop, this can be a career ending choice. So these decisions are, you know, make or break careers. Okay. So now we're in pre-production. We got greenlit. So producers manage the entire production budget creatives, people. And remember, producers aren't just thinking about money. They're contributing to the creative decisions, especially uh, in solving problems, um, but they also rely on their other creatives. So financing, and very often financing continues throughout the film. Sometimes um, in the middle of the film, they'll go out and get some more financing or more money to help finish making the film, finish making the, film the way the director wants to. So your executive producer, we covered that. Uh, now we have the assistant director. So logistics, planning, shooting. Eventually you're gonna hire these people like the location scout. The length of time between starting pre-production and principal photography, that's production. Uh, and so again, not uh, you know 90 days for comedy, horror, but then once you get into sci-fi action fantasy, a lot more time, really twice as much time is needed to prep. prep bigger sets, more elaborate costumes, you need more time and you're spending more money. So you have to, you know, make sure you're, you're not wasting that money. Those, those sci-fi action fantasy budgets tend to be higher, higher stakes, more money's on the line. So here's what we're doing in pre-production. We're doing logistics. We're gonna set up a production office, a schedule. We'll start scouting locations, um, getting the equipment, uh, hiring, um, lots and lots of meetings, designs and plans, casting, production design is going to be, begin. So we've got to look at drawings and approve those. And there's lots and lots of li uh, legalities. There's, you know, location contracts, crew contracts, music licensing, lots and lots of uh, legal stuff to work out to make sure everything's in line. And let's not forget insurance. Insurance is very important to the industry. You must insure your production and it's expensive and there's a lot of rules. So creative meetings and scouting, as we uh, mentioned, production real estate, the producer, like this gentleman here, usually they'll rent a production office. This isn't something they just own. Production companies just sort of spring up out of nowhere and they'll rent space like you see here in the image. 
Um, a lot of times creative me meetings and script writings take place in private homes, maybe cafes. Uh, a lot of work takes place on the phone or over Zoom. Lots and lots of meetings, emails. Uh, sometimes you come into the office because it acts as a headquarters and that's where the producer maybe will have their office. You're also going to start renting sound stages so you can start building the sets. Of course, you won't rent those sound stages until you have drawings or models approved by your director. So there's lots of steps in this process, but you're going to start securing these things or scheduling these things. Plus, you know, if you have, a, again, a fantasy film, you're going to need to set your art department to work on all of those uh, props and so forth so that they can, they can be completed for actual shooting. Okay, so hiring in uh, film is kind of what we would say hierarchical and familial, okay? You basically hire people you know and respect, okay? You don't want anyone who's going to embarrass you on the set, and you also want to hire people who take care of you. And usually it's a family of people who all work for and hire each other. So the producer hires directors, they cast the stars. Producers and directors hire the DP, the production designer, the sound designer, the editor, the composer. Sometimes directors have a choice, sometimes they don't. Depending on the production, if they know someone, someone they want to work with. Casting directors hire the minor roles, production designers hires the art department. So usually your department heads have the right to hire whoever they want. The, For example, the the director is not going to tell the you know, cinematographer who to hire as an electrician. That's going to be his choice. Producers hire all the other departments. So sound, okay, especially sound recording, special effects, the assistant director, stunts, all that kind of stuff, safety, security, all that's hired by our production. The cinematographer hires the lighting and the camera crews, and the producer hires the production locations and transportation team. So Budget. Producers use their knowledge of projected costs and expenses to compile an initial budget. Okay. Note that 10%, this is this number right here, it's called a contingency. Okay. So you add up all the money that you think it's going to cost and you see all the different uh, things here, project development, staff, rights, music, talent, crew and personnel. Look at that. That's a big expense. Okay. Production expenses. Uh, you add all that up and then you add 10%. That's called your contingency in case you go over budget, okay? Now, budgets are ne never stay the same. They're fluid. Um, expenses go up, um, new financing comes in, so on and so forth. So the budget's always being updated and always, you know, generally going up. Uh, here's a basic budgeting. You'll see that production, labor, and materials count constitutes 40% of your budget. It's almost half. Post-production, editing, and sound, only 13. Your talent, that's when they, they say talent, that means your actors. That's a quarter of your budget. Your producer, your writer, director only constitutes 14. Now, of course, there's only a couple of them. Sometimes scripts are very expensive. Sometimes they're very cheap. In the larger scheme of things, scripts and writers aren't really the big expense. And usually not the director, unless they're a big, big name, in which case they're probably a producer and they want to share in the profits. Okay, <clears throat> so budget, you hear, you see another, you know, again, production is 40%, cast around 15 here, different, you see different things. Marketing here is a little low relative, but it depends where the money goes, production costs, insurance, very huge, big, important thing, uh, marketing, uh, important, uh, lots of different positions, money is always adding up. So once we've got our budget, we begin to go into a script uh, breakdown. It's an important filmmaking process that allows you to identify all the script elements needed to prep, schedule, and budget a film production. So basically, you go line by line in the script, and you're saying, okay, here's a scene here. We're going to need a location that looks like this. Oh, my gosh, looks like we need an inner tube, and we're going to need a bicycle, whatever it is. And you start writing all this stuff down. And so, and uh, putting it to different departments. So each scene gets a breakdown of all the things needed in the scene. And that goes to each department. The art department gets all the props and the set pieces. Uh, the camera department gets a notes on what they're going to need for camera and so on and so forth. Okay. So these are all, these are called breakdown reports and there's individual scene breakouts and so on and so forth. Eventually, you're building to the shooting schedule. So here we have a script breakdown. You're seeing the things that are needed for costumes, for props, for makeup, set dressing, stunts, cast, special effects, um, 
all these things there'll be there'll be also be notes uh taken for cinematography and lighting and so forth all this is done to be able to take advantage of production so once you uh, are ready you have everything all the equipment you need to be able to shoot you can't waste time in production so production department you've got your producer of course you've got your line producer who's overseeing production he hires someone called a production manager and a production coordinator they're mainly doing legal financial accounting paperwork uh, locations managers supervise all locations ensure safety and plan for how the location is going to look and work you have location scouts who begin going out and looking for locations and trying to sign contracts with people you have transportation uh, supervisors teamsters who essentially move the production there's lots and lots of equipment and props and various machines that are needed so all that has to move to different locations so that's a, a, a department to itself. And of course you have production assistants. And this is the job that uh, young people are most likely to get on a film. This is essentially a PA and you do whatever you're asked, anything from locking off a location, going to get coffee, helping with anything that's asked. So in production, we're now moving into production. You have different places that takes place. We have green screen studios where we're shooting uh, our CGI shots or our composite shots. You have studio sets for interior shots. So this is a set that was built inside of a studio to shoot this interior, but you also have real location. So all these things might be going on. They're not going on simultaneous, simultaneously because remember principal photography is with the cinematographer and the director. They can only do one of these things at a time, but they might be building the set while they're shooting the location. So they come back and shoot on that location. Meanwhile, they've built, they've built the green screen studio. So all this is coordinated and planned, okay? Average length of principal photography. So now we're talking about how long it takes them to shoot a film. So again, horror, romance, little lower budget um, uh, genres are coming in, uh, you, know, you know, three months or so. But action and venture, um fantasy sci-fi thriller a little longer it looks like it's more like six months um for the average time to shoot the film let's get into some production details so your on-set production team so now this is the guys not in the office but on the set where the camera is you got your line producer okay and production manager you've got your assistant director who's in charge of the shooting schedule. Very, very, very important person in production is the assistant director. They're not the director's helper. They have their own responsibilities. They're in charge of organization, logistics, timing, and schedule. So the director and the DP can focus on their own creative elements. They don't have to worry about time and union rules and all that kind of logistics stuff that's handled by one person on set, okay? So in production, we're, you know, we've got an operational budget, uh, craft services, payouts and locations, parking lots, catering to the needs of prima donna sometimes. They want their own special uh, car or they need special food. You've got safety personnel, union rules on set, contract with locations, parking permits for crew trucks, medics on set, hundreds and hundreds of considerations you have to think about when you are going to take a production on the road to a location or to a studio. It's lots and lots of work and lots of details to get right. Uh, because if you have a mistake and a screw up, you can be sued for a lot of money. Okay, so what are the goals of production? To successfully shoot script to the director's satisfaction, stay within budget by minimizing expenses, okay? So what you wanna do is try to cut deals with local merchants and government. Hey, we'll come and shoot in your town and bring business. Can you give us a deal on X, on taxes or what have you? Minimize your overage and, and payroll expenses by carefully planning the shoot. When your shoot goes over, it costs you extra money to pay the workers double time and extra time. So if you plan well, you don't have those problems. You try to cheap out when it's possible, especially in lower budget productions. Now, not on a, on a Kubrick film, on a Christopher Nolan film, they're not gonna be cheaping out, but many films do. So you wanna to try to maintain your shooting schedule. You have a plan and usually your insurance is connected to your shooting schedule. So you have insurance for 30 days to complete the shooting schedule. And maybe you plan for 20, 28 days with a two day sort of you know 
cushion. Sometimes that goes over, all right? So that's going to cost you extra money. So you want to avoid safety, union, and legal, legal entanglements. You want to abide by the law, and you only cheat when you're sure you're not going to get caught. So satisfy production schedule and contract, then producers earn a bonus. They usually have something built in where if uh, it's built into the budget, that if they bring the film in on time and on budget, they get a big bonus, and that is one of their objectives. So the assistant director, I've mentioned this person before, and you can see this person here, uh, that this, it's this woman here, she's talking to the director. This is one of the grips or maybe even the DP and they're planning a shot. So assistant directors handle the logistics of running the set during production, okay? They're doing a lot of pointing and yelling and directing of the crew, okay? They are the liaison between the director and the rest of the crew. So the director doesn't run around and yell at people and tell them what to do. Uh, that's kind of the job of the AD. And this way, um, it, the, the division of labor helps the director focus on the creative elements and work with the creatives and most particularly work with the cast, okay? So ADs, as we call them, assistant director AD, sometimes called first AD because they're also second and third ADs. Um, they create and manage the shooting schedule and shot lists. Uh, they coordinate with all the department heads. They are the work boss on set, barking orders, shooting schedule, call sheets, uh, daily production reports, as we'll learn. And essentially, they're the producer's representative on set. Now, they're, they're, it's not like they're working against the director, but remember, the director is there to get to realize his creative vision, whereas the assistant director is there to make that the, sure that the film gets done on budget and on time. OK, sometimes those things can collide because the director wants another take or wants to spend a whole lot of money to do something crazy. And it's, you know, it's not in the budget. So the AD has to sometimes step in. And it really depends on the power of the director and the status of the AD, what's going to happen. So organization, leadership and guidance. And of course, they also monitor time and shooting rules. The, the AD is sort of making sure that the production is, is basically obeying the rules and the creatives aren't getting out of hand that, uh, you know, regulations are followed, okay? All right, so scene breakdowns, I mentioned those. Um, one scene, one location, multiple shots. Script breakouts from pre-production are now used to prepare for shooting day. So we looked at all, everything we need and we start making up shot lists. Here's a breakout sheet for the production with all the details and information you see there. Here's a shot list. This is created by the assistant director. This is, these are all exterior shots. You guys will recognize some of these close-ups, medium shots, okay? And this is telling us all the things that are going on. These kind of, this information, this kind of detail is created, planning, 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 so that production goes smoothly. Here is a preliminary shooting schedule. So this is for, uh, okay, here's breakfast early in the morning, and then we're going to do this first shot, which is scene four, we're shooting out of order, interior day, Robert arrives home, and over here is Jen and Libby discussing the robbery, okay? So that's what we're doing. This is our goal, to get these two shots before lunch. So that's a shooting schedule, and that's made by the AD consulting with the director and consulting with the producer. Everybody comes together to figure out what can we accomplish in the amount of time that we have, Okay. So a couple of things you have to consider. This is all, this is all things that the AD and the producer are, are thinking about. So daylight, you only get so much. So the continuity must match. So for example, in, if you're shooting in the winter, you have less daylight, better to shoot in the summer. Um, you have longer time. Lighting, how much time is needed between setups? How detailed is your lighting? Are you going for really artistic, beautiful plan on shooting, taking a longer time? Changing locations. How long is it going to take to move and reset? What are the rules? What are the neighborhood rules when you're shooting? You can't just go crazy and shoot all night or people are going to call the police on you. Or well, there's union rules for your crew, for overtime, for turnaround, continuity, hair, makeup, aging, okay? The availability of your actors. You might have an actor booked for two days, but then you realize you need two more days to, to finish his scenes. He might be booked. Okay, that's a problem. Stunts and, and effects and, and, and prep are really ready. You know, they, how much time they need to reset. If we blow something up, how long before we can shoot again and do a second take? Because you can't rush those folks because safety is very important. Okay. Okay, so uh, here's some special shooting needs too. This is where we're really getting in the weeds. But I think you'll get a kick out of this. So children under 18 must have a union teacher on set and a guardian. 
okay? Children can only work six hours a day, young children. So this is why very often they use twins. I don't know what the age cutoff is. Maybe it's around eight, nine, or 10, but they will often use twins so that they can work each twin six hours. That's how that works. Firearms are handled on set by an armorer, and they usually lock them all up. They're in charge of them. They show the actors how to hold the gun, how to you know, handle it and so forth. And of course they're charged of safety. They're supposed to check the gun every time to make sure there's not a live bullet in there. Stunts, stunt coordinator team, fight coordinators, drivers, choreographers. What if we have dance or a martial arts sequence? Okay, sword play, um, special creatures that move in a certain way, cars. Okay, this is huge. We have your picture car coordinator, okay? Greens, you have what's called a greensman. Now, the greensman is in charge of, make, of decorating exteriors with greens. Weather crew, fire and explosion. If you have big explosions, you must have a FOS, fireman on set, and an explosive team. More than just your stunt team, you have to have an explosives team that's there to specifically handle explosives. Uh, special camera ops. So maybe you have a steady cam operator. We, you guys know what that is. Car rigs, you want to rig a, an expensive camera to the hood of a car. You bring in a special rigger for that underwater. Okay. Uh, special effects makeup, sometimes wounds or prosthetics. You bring in a specialist, animal trainers. And my favorite of all, the animal wrangler. Now, this is the guy who goes to the side of an exterior shoot and ensures it's safe from animals, okay? And all these specialists exist all over Los Angeles, dozens of them, really. And they're available to be, to be hired and they bring a kit, they bring their expertise, but they also bring maybe a trained animal, they bring the special cars or they bring all the equipment you need. Let's take a look at some pictures. So we have wounds. You have people who specialize in wounds for like a zombie. So what animal wranglers do, here we have three actresses in this lake. Now, what if there's uh, snakes in this lake or if it was in Florida and there's crocodiles? So it's the animal wrangler's job to make sure that an exterior shoot is safe. That's quite an interesting job. The greensman will um, decorate the exterior. So someone is building the interior, that's different. But the greensman's responsible for all the green. So they'll bring in actual plants and they'll also bring in fake plants to, to decorate it and make it look like it's very fertile, like you see here from Lord of the Rings. Also, we have fencing, any kind of special training you'll bring someone in. And usually the actors will have to begin training before you're shooting. Uh, you have an armorer who handles guns. Now your picture car coordinator is a guy who has connections to classic cars. So he can get you, you need a 76 uh, Mustang or something or Corvette, he, cherry apple red. He's gonna be able to get that car and he's gonna stay with that car and, and take care of that car when shooting is done each day because those cars are expensive. And they're hired out very often. That's called a picture car coordinator. In addition to that, you have people who just bring in generic cars that are used. Because remember, every car that you see on a street in a film was placed there. They're not just letting normal people's cars appear in the movie. They have to close off the streets, tow out any cars that, don't, that the owners don't move them. And then they bring in sometimes broken cars that don't barely work to park, especially for stunt shot. Because what happens if the stunts go wrong. If they smash up a, a beater car, that's fine. If they smash up your car, that's a problem. And here's the last example. There's weather guys. So they have people who come in and do rain and wind and uh, weather. All this stuff is um, generated. Um, here's a couple examples. Rescue Dawn. The cast showed up 40 pounds underweight. They all shot the captivity and escape scenes while they were underweight and they ate normally and they gained root, weight through the production. And then after they gained weight, they shot uh, all the scenes before that they were captured, thereby, you know, losing the weight. Now, Castaway was shot for a month with, with Tom Hanks at normal weight. Then production suspended while Hanks lost weight. Nine days later, production resumed for the shots of him as a skinny castaway in the film. He loses a lot, a lot of weight. Uh, Hanks nearly died during production from an infection, which led to extensive delays as he got healthy because... Productions can turn dangerous. Um, another example here, um, locations like Venice, California get used as shooting locations hundreds of times of years. And LA neighborhoods have rules that state no production may start before seven. All the crew have to show up and park in parking lots. And uh, if the businesses are disrupted, then they will um, often have to be compensated by the production team. Yeah, that's right. Pay them out a thousand dollars because nobody could get to their shop because you were shooting on the street. So. 
That's how that works. And different cities and states have different rules for how to compensate for overtime and so forth. Uh, one of the places, Atlanta, Georgia, has where a lot of new shows are being shot, including the ATL, more relaxed labor laws has con have continued to attract productions. And now Atlanta rivals New York for productions. So productions can be deadly. So many things can go on wrong during a production. There are a million variables. And here's an example of a gentleman who was killed in a helicopter crash uh, filming, okay? Uh, of course, I have a shot here from um, of uh, good old uh, Alec Baldwin uh, recently killed someone, actually she fired a, a pistol and killed the cinematographer and wounded the director, okay? And by law, you're required to have safety precautions built into your productions, yet every year, cast and crew are injured and sometimes even killed. So here's an example. Uh, Vic Morrow and two children were killed during the filming of a movie, The Twilight Zone in Santa Clarita, California, not far from where many of you live. And after this incident, uh, the rules changed a lot and they got safer. But here's a couple, here's some examples of mishaps. You can read through this. I'm not going to read these all. I mentioned the rust shooting incident. Here's Star Wars. Harrison Ford fractured a bone in his leg while filming at the studios. A hydraulic door fell on him. His ankle will likely need a plate and screws. He's an old man, and now he's got to go get a plate and screws. Uh, Brad Pitt was uh, tore his Achilles, playing Achilles in Troy. Uh, the Crow, of course, Brandon Lee was killed. So many, many examples of people getting injured. So a couple things I wanted to mention you to. This is kind of high-level knowledge. The laws of production, good, fast, and cheap. You only get two out of three. So when you're planning production, think like this. If you want it to be good and fast, you need to move fast, and this, you're going to make a great film really fast, it's not going to be cheap. You're going to have to throw money at that film. Now, if you want to make something that's fast and cheap, it's not likely it's going to be good. If you want to make something that's good and cheap, well, it's not going to be fast. You're going to take you a long, long, long time to produce that because you can't spend a lot of money and hire more people or throw money at problems. So just a couple of laws of production to think about. There's a lot of union rules for cast and crews, and they're very strict. And this is one of the things that the producer and the assistant directors keep track of. There's insurance, there's mandatory breaks, and so on and so forth. A couple of all things here, shooting schedule rules. 12-hour day is standard. When you're on a location, it's 14 hours. That's a standard day. That's how many days you're expected to work. Um, depends on if it's union or not. Bigger films are going to be union. Smaller films sometimes are not. Um, overtime is a time and a half to 14 hours, double time after. But remember, sometimes shooting days can go 16, 18 hours. Um, you were given a 10-hour turnaround for the crew. That means you have 10 hours from the wrap. So when, it, when they call wrap and everybody leaves, you have maybe you're going to get 10 hours from when they can ask you to come back again the next day. Um, you get a lunch break after six hours because you must eat every six hours and so on and so forth. Lots of interesting details about how far if you have to drive. And the assistant director is acutely aware of all the production rules and regulations. Okay, that's part of their job. Working with a the producer, they plan shooting according to budgetary and scheduling limitations. Here's the 30 mile rule where basically if you're outside of this uh, circle, then you have to pay the people that you're hiring a little extra to drive that way. The AD produces three reports every day. So this is a good quiz question, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. So you have the daily production report, you have the call sheet and you have the shooting schedule. So shooting schedule is exactly what it sounds like. The call sheet is detailed information on the next day's shooting schedule. And this is about who needs to come and, and when. It basically tells the crew when to, when to show up. This is their call sheet, giving them their call time, call being when they got to come to work. Now, the daily production report is a little more detailed. That's a full accounting of what was accomplished that day. And this goes to the line producer. OK, it goes to payroll and the studio, the people that are putting up the money. It's accounting of pages covered, shots finished, and it acts as the final legal document for the day shooting. And so it's very important to to this is how the money people monitor the progress of the film. So the daily production report, call sheet and shooting schedule. 
shooting schedules, just like we discussed, it's made for the entire production and pre-production. But as you begin shooting, things are going to change. Shots get moved around all the time. The shooting schedule isn't per permanent. That's why you put out kind of a new one every day because you're making adjustments, minor adjustments. And of course, weather and other factors play a role. Maybe an actor gets injured. Call sheet. This provides all the information needed for a day of shooting. You see what's here. The crew call is at 7 a.m. This is giving you all the details, even gives you weather. You know, gives you a lot more information than you need sometimes. Um, what's going on, transportation needs, specific equipment needs. And this is created by the AD and sometimes with the producer's assistance. And this is called the daily production report. Okay, so this is uh, basically a... Uh, uh, much more detailed. This goes, this acts as a, a legal document and it's really important if there's injuries or if the film goes over budget. Okay. All right. So first day of shooting location. All right. Just to give you an example of how things are going to work. We'll go through this fast. Location manager shows up, security and food service. They show up at 5, 5.30 in the morning, way early. Food starts being served at 6 a.m. Uh, at the crew remote lot. Crew begins arriving. So basically, they only feed you before you're supposed to work. So if you show up just on time for work, you don't get any food. You have to show up early to get breakfast. Then 7 o'clock is the call time. The layout crew comes in, the art department. Lighting crew comes in maybe a little later. Director and producer don't stroll, stroll in until 8 a.m., Okay. Now, the cast comes in at 9, maybe. This gives the director and producer time to work and set things up. 10 a.m. is going to be your first shot, so your cast goes right into makeup. We work until 1.30 uh, when we take a lunch break. Okay, we work until 8.30. That's camera wrap, producer and produ a director walk away. But then the location doesn't wrap for another hour because the crew has to break down all the equipment, all right? This means because uh, of the 10-hour turnaround, we can't call people back in until 7.30 in the morning, all right? So uh, time is meticulously monitored on a film set. Uh, time is money for the producer. And uh, one, here's a nice good news, though. Craft services. Look at that spread of food. So crews are fed two meals a day, breakfast before call time, lunch, lunch six hours after call time, and at the 12th hour. So if they end up going over 12 hours, you will get second meal. Snacks and coffee are available all day, as you see here. By feeding the crew on set, they keep them close and on schedule. What would happen if everybody went out to lunch and you know people were coming back at different times? And also conversations and problem solving can occur during lunch. Uh, this expense is incurred every day you're in production though. So in addition to paying all these people, sometimes paying to rent their kit, uh, you are also providing food for them for the entire length of the production. This is one of the reasons productions try to keep production time uh, smaller because you're just burning money and every day you shoot you're just spending lots and lots of extra money just to get that shot done so life in the film business are you thinking about it <clears throat> are you prepared to work all night uh, are you prepared to work at least 12 hours a day probably more are you prepared to work six to seven days a week are you prepared to gather and maintain a tool kit relevant to your position so you're going to actually have to buy equipment that you bring to work every day are you prepared for shoots that go 12, 16, 18 hours with little notice? The best comparison would be to compare it to the military because you receive your orders, you report for work, no questions asked. You do the work regardless of where it is and how long it takes. You only leave when you're dismissed uh, and then repeat the next day. Here's a quick breakdown. I've covered this earlier. I don't wanna spend a lot of time on it, but this is a quick breakdown from top to bottom of all the various people who work on the film set. So now we're into post-production. Average time between starting post-production and US theatrical release. Here we see, uh, again, it's quite a few days. You'll notice that post-production takes, takes maybe the longest amount of time or, or it can take the longest amount of time. For a lot of more complex films, sci-fi, fantasy, it's gonna take them almost a full year to edit and do all the CGI and sound. Uh, horror and action, or horror and crime at least a little bit less so in post-production the producer oversees posts marketing and distribution the producer is going to hire someone called a post-production supervisor and they're sort of like the director for post-production okay so they don't they aren't as creative they aren't as they don't have as much creative input they're more of a manager but what they're going to do is they're going to 
uh, coordinate between ADR, sound design, editing, visual effects. There's a lot of different departments, audio and visual. So they have to coordinate between everyone, make sure all the files are all working together. You also have a visual effects supervisor. They're going to supervise all the CGI. The director and editor are working, editing the film. Your sound designer is doing all the ADR, the Foley, the editing, the mixing. Well, you don't do the mixing until everything else is done, of course. And then later on, when you're done, you're going to be doing mastering, color correction, titles, and credits. Okay. Post-production supervisor is responsible for supervising the post-production process. So they're pulling the final project together, making sure deadlines are met, overseeing reshoots and visual effects, editing, printing, delivering, maintaining communication between producers, editors, and companies uh, that have been outsourced. Because many times credits, um, certain lab work, certain things are all outsourced by the production company. They don't do it themselves. So of course, in post-production, we have editing sound and editing uh, picture. We just had two lectures on that. And the post-production phase of creating a film takes longer than the actual shooting of the film and can take several months to complete because it includes editing, color correction, and the addition of music and sound. The process of editing the movie can be seen as the second directing because through post-production, it is possible to change the intention of the movie. And very often this happens because of problems or even discoveries that happen during the shooting process. Okay, post-production. In post, most creative work alone is done alone in studios and offices, all right? A couple of things that are covered, some of the logistics, complete post-production, duplication, mastering. Uh, legalities, you wanna make sure you secure a non-R rating, why? Because then you can get people under the age of 18 and you can be assured you have a higher chance of success and return on your investment. Music licensing, payouts and contracts resolved. You gotta make sure you get the credits uh, right. You gotta do all your final production reports and making sure that you know all the dis distribution rules in different countries, very complex, not gonna get into all that. So in finishing, just to mention this, color correction and sound, look at the difference here. This is um, the a Girl with a Dragon Tattoo movie. So this is how they shot it. And then once they did color correction, this is probably a bleach bypass process, if you remember that term. And of course, the, in the final edit, they're gonna do a lot of mastering and sweetening of sound, credits and film tasks, uh, titles usually farmed out to other production houses who specialize in that. So then we go into marketing and very often the producer concerns themselves a lot with marketing. So while the post-production supervisor is sort of managing everyone working in their own studio, <clears throat> the, the producer may turn their attention to marketing. And here we see a marketing for one of the X-Men movies, which many people complained about because they thought it was too violent. So getting the marketing right, sometimes a marketing campaign can really make a film uh, intrigue people about a film or it can turn them off. So as long as I was in marketing, if a film was succeeded, it was a brilliant film. And if it didn't, it was the marketing. I will always consider my pay to be hazard pay. So this was someone in the marketing business. And usually the higher, this is a chart which shows you the higher the production budget. In other words, the more the sp money they spend to make the film, generally the more money they're going to spend to market the film. Okay. So the bigger the film's budget, the more it's spent on marketing. They say go big, which is the theater, or go home, which is streaming. All right. So if you want to be in the theater, you got to spend money to market the film. Now, sometimes smaller films can build a following through festivals. That's another great way that that happens or through what's called a word of mouth campaign. And that happens slowly over time. As more and more people see a film, it, it builds momentum. But that's a little bit more of a rare case for big budget Hollywood films. They spend usually if they spend one hundred million dollars to make the film, they're going to spend 50 million dollars to market the film. So it's sort of a two to one ratio, okay, which I explain here. Um, production is the most expensive part. As you see here, all the orange, uh, these are the costs, okay. Um, above the line, this is your talent. That's director, producer, maybe some of your key creatives and post-production. You see post-production is not that expensive. It's mo mainly production. And then again, you're gonna spend a two to one ratio. You're gonna spend half as much money on marketing as you spent on the budget. So there's lots of different ways. Film marketing is, is essential. Uh, the activities and strategies filmmakers use to promote and to bring in audiences for their film. This is a, important. Uh, famously, Kubrick 
um, changed the marketing for 2001 to appeal to um, the hippie generation of the 60s and the film took off. Okay, uh, film marketing is, is like storytelling. The marketer's job should be to spark interest and connect with new audiences all over the world. Uh, when and where to release the film is crucial. Much like directing and cinematography, film marketing is a major determining factor of the success of the film. So you've got press junkets, publicity blitzes. You're going to have signing the contract of your primary stars, if, whether or not they have to go around and do talk shows. Okay, so sometimes you have to pay them more if you want them to do that. Um, so you're doing YouTube campaigns, you're trying to find influencers who like the films, all kinds of stuff. So it's really important. So this leads us to discussion of box office. We'll pick up the what pace the here. Top 10 tips for producing. All right. Uh, Hollywood faces devastating costs from California bills. So there's, there's some headlines talking about all the various things the box office that, that uh, Hollywood has faced. So streaming, COVID, declining audiences, and changing the entertainment tastes, okay? Let's not forget that video games have surpassed movies in a lot of ways. So this has all led to declining revenues, and Hollywood has turned to youth-oriented blockbusters primarily and big social media marketing campaigns to bolster ticket sales. So attendance has been declining. This goes to 2018, which is prior to the pandemic. So it was in decline generally year over year for some time. Uh, the pandemic was a disaster for Hollywood because, of course, the theaters were closed and uh, many people became acclimated to streaming during the pandemic, including a lot of young people who would have been going to movies. Now they were signing up for streaming services or attending Zoom school. So streaming has exploded, of course. This is all pretty obvious. You can see that uh, online video and, and streaming has just taken off while theatrical satellite, pretty much everything else has gone downhill. Okay. Uh, digital dominates. And here you see when it comes to entertainment money, digital is 76, 76% of the, of the revenue and physical is dwindling as well. People are spending less money to actually buy a DVD theatrical as well. Okay. So digital is accounting for two thirds or uh, three quarters. Here's the numbers. Again, you see 2020 worked in, you see that uh, physical even took a hit and it's been declining for some time. Um, uh, theatrical was going up, but then 2020, the pandemic really hit it and really knocked it back. Whereas we see uh, digital continuing to increase and we can expect that to continue into the future. A uh, real quick note on box office numbers. Um, the international market has now surpassed the domestic market, which means essentially that Hollywood is making more money overseas in total, not any one market, but them all combined than they are here at home. Opening weekend is very important. As you see, if you look at some of the most, these are all Marvel films. I know you can't see the actual titles, it's too small, but this is the Avengers. The biggest, most successful films had big opening weekends. And conversely, the films that kind of opened weak had uh, weaker overall takes because theater owners know, they, they can usually tell by Sunday of the opening weekend how big the film's going to be. They, they just, they have calculations. So how much money does it cost to make a movie? Average production cost is around $40 million. Uh, $100 million and up is a bigger film. Now you're getting into the range of, you know, your superhero films, although they could be 200, 300, 400 million. Um, it's gone up. Uh, production costs have gone up, uh, as you can see. So um, again, depends on genre, uh, horror and uh, romance cheaper. That's why they, and they appeal to the young. That's why more of those films will sometimes get made because they can be done lower budget, but they typically also make back less money unless you have a big hit on your hands. So sci-fi adventure films are higher budget to the cost of production. Oscars, quick note on the Oscars, then we'll wrap up. So here you see uh, Oscars do contribute uh, to the bottom line. Um, when you get an Oscar, this translates to money. More people go see the film, as you can see here. These uh, numbers are comparing winners and nominees relative to other films in blue. So whether you win or not, it, more people are going to see your film because you were nominated. Okay, this leads us to the review and a wrap up. So we talked about producers. We talked about executive producers, the money men, co-producers helping with support and finance, associate producers, honorary, line producers, oversee production. So they got their hands dirty in the production. Production manager and coordinators are mainly paperwork people in the office handling permits and accounting. 
Assistant directors uh, are very important. They handle production, logistics, scheduling. They're sort of one of the bosses of the crew on set. Uh, the second assistant director is actually the assistant to the assistant director. And that person does whatever the, the AD tells them, but they also usually handle the extras and the background action. Uh, and between the two of them, they create the shooting schedule, the call sheet, the daily production report. So when you're developing a script, you're going to uh, end up pitching it. Um, you've got pre-production, you've got financing and budget to consider, renting spaces. During production, we've got all these various things to consider, including union rules, craft services, special needs. Uh, we have a post-production supervisor who is hired by the producer. And then, of course, we talked a little bit about marketing. So that pretty much ends it for today. So I'm going to stop my share. Whoops, I'm out of focus. Whoa! So I hope you... Uh, enjoyed today's lecture. I know that we went into some um, areas that maybe you don't know about, but if you're thinking about making a film, this information will be good for you. And so, of course, some of this stuff will be on your quiz, so please do study. Hope you've enjoyed and talk to you soon.